everyone what's up welcome back to the channel if you're new here my name is mikey and in today's video we're doing a get ready with me slash pack with me as we're going to japan in a few days with the whole family if you're new here my mom is turning 80 this year and her wish was to go to japan with everyone so that's what we're doing i'm so excited also a little bit anxious and nervous just because me and donnie haven't traveled in about five years ever since the pandemic me and donnie haven't traveled and before that we were traveling at least to like two to four countries every single year it was kind of something that just connected us because we both love to travel we both of adventure and because we haven't been able to do that so there's a little piece of us missing and so I'm excited to get back to that and hopefully we can continue that going forward but yeah I'm excited but also like I said a little bit nervous and anxious because I haven't packed for a long trip in quite some time we're gonna be in Japan for I'm gonna say 12 days and that's 14 days total with travel time and so we're gonna be gone for for a good amount of time the girls are going to be okay, Donnie's family is staying and they're house sitting for us. But yeah, with that said, I set up like a little makeshift closet back here of some of the things I'm thinking of bringing. Do I do this normally? Heck no. I'm usually the type of guy who packs like a couple days or even the day before and then I just throw everything in there and then I figure it out when we get to the place we're going. But because I have a channel now, I just want to take you guys along in the process of what I'm trying to bring with me in terms of clothes. My biggest concern right now with packing is Japan is notoriously hot in July. It's one of their hottest months there. And so I'm like, do I need to bring extra clothes because I'm going to be sweating all day? Do I need um, a change of clothes per day? Like I'm a nervous wreck in terms of what to bring. They do have laundry services at some of the hotels we're staying, but I'm very particular about my laundry because I like to air dry a bunch of my clothes. So I'm freaking out just a little bit but I have you guys here with me and we're gonna get through this together. I also have my gear right here that I'm planning to take. Later in the video I'll go over that as well. And also as you can see right here these two beautiful pieces of luggage they're from a company called Level 8 and they're sponsoring a portion of this video. There are two key features for these check-ins that basically were the main reason why I got in contact with them to see if they wanted to collaborate with me but we're gonna get into that later. For now, let's go ahead and check out the clothes, do a little try-on haul, and see what we're going to bring. All right, so with that said, let's get into it. Okay, so right here we have all of our tops that we're thinking about bringing. We have things from sleeveless, polos, normal t-shirts, and button-ups. Down here we have my shoes. I am definitely bringing these. These are New Balances, and I think these are going to be my main shoe for the whole trip because they're just so comfortable. And I just love that they're chunky. I love me a chunky shoe. I'm in my like chunky shoe era right now, so these guys are definitely coming along. I'm also bringing these North Face sandals. I just picked these up. I love how chunky the straps are in here. These just look super cool to me. And they're also comfortable. Next up, I'm bringing my Crocs. These guys go everywhere with me because they're just so lightweight and I love that <laughs> there's just ventilation and so these guys I can wear all day. And then finally, I'm bringing a pair of Nike sandals. These are a little bit on a darker tone since all of those are more in the neutral vibe. Just in case I need something dark to match some of the clothes, I might bring this, but we'll see. And then over here, we just have a stack of bottoms. There's some jeans, shorts, and then some pants. I'm going to go through this depending on what can work with multiple things on the top. Because for me, I like to bring a lot of tops, but then just a few key bottom pieces. Definitely going to downsize that to about a third of that. I'm definitely not taking all of that. So the first one, I've worn this on the channel in my previous vlog where I watched Janet. I wore this one. This is from Zara. It's just a basic sleeveless top, boxy cut. Crazy thing though is when I washed this, I accidentally put a rag in there that I used to wipe down something on my car and I guess it had some grease so it kind of stained. You see that? And then all back here. But I'm like it kind of matches the vibe so I'm not really too mad about it. I also paid $45 for this freaking tee so I'm trying not to waste it so I'll just take this with me. Next up is another tee from Zara and this is also a sleeveless shirt it has this really cool texture i think this would be really cute in japan as a pocket right here like i could just imagine myself wearing this maybe with some like khaki cargos walking down kyoto trying to look cute and stuff yeah so this is definitely going with me this is a polo shirt i thrifted back in the day but i just love the texture of this as well very simple and clean i have another sleeveless shirt here but this is in a polo and I've worn this on the channel quite a few times as well. And this is from ASOS. Yeah, I love the color in here. See, you know me, I love my neutrals, guys. Right here, you see me wear this. This is my Laker shirt. And this is from New Era. Same sort of vibe here, boxy cut, oversized. And this is from Jed Cal's line, Rule of Thirds. I'm like obsessed with this tee. This is currently my favorite tee. 
I wish I bought more, but he's coming out with another drop and I believe it's coming in like a white or cream color, so you know I'm gonna cop that. I have another polo here and this one is again from Zara. This was gifted to me by my cousin and I don't know, just I'm thinking of bringing this, but I'm like 50-50 about it. I have a button up here from Quicksilver, again neutral. It's very light and airy and I feel like this will be nice in Japan. The only thing though is that this does get wrinkly really easily and so I'm not even sure if I want to be messing with that, so we'll see. This is another thrifted shirt. It's actually my dad's. So when my dad passed, I actually took a bunch of his clothes. He had a bunch of vintage denim from like Wrangler, Levi's. They're all baggy cuts. I just love them. So I'm taking this guy for sure. This is a button down from Jack and Jones. I think I got this at Nordstrom Rack, but I don't know if this is too beachy. Like the back looks a little bit beachy, but the front looks cool. So I don't know, this is a maybe. We'll see. Here's a button down from All Saints. Now that I said this one look beachy, this one is definitely giving a beach vibes. So we're gonna just throw that one out. Cause yeah, no. Here's a button down. Here's a button up. Have I been saying button up or button downs? What do you guys say? Button up, button downs. Anyways, here's a button down. This is from Scotch and Soda. I like the detailing of the cuff here and how they have a button closure so that you can cuff the sleeve. I feel like that's super cute. And I like the material of this. It's very light and flowy. Then I just have that same exact shirt in a different design. This is in a pink design, again with that button detail for the cuff of the sleeve. This one I just picked up from Zara. It, I don't know, when I saw it, it was kind of giving me like Tokyo summer vibes, even though I don't really know Tokyo fashion. I should probably look that up. But I don't know, it just looked like Tokyo to me for some reason, so I picked it up. And it's sort of see-through, so I feel like that will be really nice in hot weather. And the material, even though it looks heavy, it's not heavy, it's pretty light, so I feel like this will be nice. This one is another one I thrifted. Actually, no, sorry. My friend Lady thrifted this for me, but I just like how it's oversized, flowy. I feel like I'm just repeating myself. You guys get it, right? You guys are understanding kind of where I'm trying to go with this. This one I'm not too sure about. I don't know if the patterns are a little bit too crazy, especially for the shoes that I'm trying to bring. I don't know if any of those are actually going to work with this, but we're going to try it anyways just because I'm trying to add color. So this is from ASOS, so we'll see. And then I have a long sleeve button up here. This is from Ralph Lauren. I'm not going to wear this as a long sleeve. I'll fold it. It's a really lightweight shirt, but I just like the color. I feel like it's giving like really summer or is it spring? It looks more spring but we're gonna try it on anyways. And then in the, I'm not sure what vlog I talked about this, but I got this at Nordstrom Rack. It's by a brand called Jungle Jungles. I just really like that little happy face in the clouds, super cute. Maybe I'll wear this for my mom's actual birthday. If we go out for dinner, this might be cute. And then finally, I have this light raincoat by Nike. It's a windbreaker. I did look at the weather there and it is currently like, cloudy with some rain but like in the upper 80s so i don't know if i'm gonna need a jacket my niece is there right now by the way so i'm gonna text her later to see how cold or not cold it is during the nighttime. because if i don't need a jacket i'm not bringing this but just in case i need something light i may bring this but yeah i feel like i just need a couple more items i'm not sure though i'm also thinking of just packing like some basic tees because i'm over here trying to be cute but in reality, when I get there, if it's so freaking hot, I might just be comfortable in just normal tees. So I might just do that, to be honest with you. I don't know. I don't know why I have so much anxiety about this, but again, I think it's because I haven't traveled for a long international trip in quite a while. So anyways, I am going to go ahead and put all this away, start folding the ones I wanna take with me, pack them in my suitcases over here. Actually, the yellow one is mine. I like it, it's cause it's a, it's like a two-tone yellow and black. And then Donnie's is this blue version right here. His is already packed. <laughs> He's good about packing, he doesn't care. He's like, let's just get it over with. So yeah, I will touch base with you guys later. I'm gonna go over all the tech that I'm gonna take with me. I just gotta get it all together. And we're gonna go thrifting. And then we're just gonna pack and uh, head to Japan, guys. All right, it's the next day and I've gathered all my tech gear out here that I'm 
planning to bring. As you saw earlier, I am an overpacker. I've always been and I've tried the minimal packing and honestly, I just, it's not for me. It's not my thing. And so I've just embraced being an overpacker and I think that's okay. When it comes to tech though, I am really trying to tone down what I bring when I travel because that is much heavier than clothes are. Clothes go in a checked bag. You don't got to worry about it. You're rolling it around usually in a checked in luggage. But when it comes to tech, that's pretty much on you during your whole travel day. And so I'm trying my best to really go minimal there. Even before I was doing videos, I had FOMO when it came to packing gear. I always would feel like, oh, this would have been awesome if I had this camera or this lens. Now that I'm adding video to the mix, I'm even more like, oh my gosh, what do I bring? What do I leave? So for this trip, I am really just trying to bring just cameras, no extra lenses, and no drones. But before we do get into that, I just want to take a minute to thank the sponsor of this portion of the video, Level 8. Earlier in the video, I mentioned two key reasons why I was drawn to the Voyager check-in luggage from Level 8. The first reason was purely for aesthetics. The minimal and sleek design along with the German-made Macrolon polycarbonate construction makes these pieces of luggage light, yet durable, fashionable, yet functional. The second reason was for the wide handle. Crafted for adventure, the innovative wide handle design not only makes cruising through airports and cobblestone streets a breeze, but it also maximizes your space. The dry and wet separation pockets protect your clothes from toiletries while also helping better organize your belongings. I also really love these 360 degree spinner wheels. They're super quiet, they glide like butter. I mean, I can't believe I'm literally over here gagging about luggage wheels, but that's because my old luggage wheels were pretty bad. If you're in the market for check-in luggage that not only looks good, rolls good, packs good, and feels good, make sure to check out level 8. We'll be rocking the Voyager 28 inch in limited colorways yellow black and celadon. I'll leave a link down below to check these out and you can also get 10% off with code Mikey10. And thank you again to level 8 for sponsoring this portion of the video. So with that said, let's get into our tech gear. Okay, let's first talk about what Donnie is bringing. So we'll start with the biggest one. He is taking my Sony a7 IV and it has a Tamron 20 to 40 millimeter lens on here. So the focal range from 20 to 40 isn't the biggest reach, but the thing I like about this lens is it's still wide enough for some building and architecture shots and shots of temples and stuff like that and landscapes. So I think that's going to be really important in Japan. And then he can zoom into 40 to get a little bit closer. And this also has a 33 megapixel sensor. So if we do need to crop in a little bit more to get even closer, we can also do that. I'm going to see if he can try to do videos too, just so it has some B-roll. He likes to take pictures, not videos. So he's going to be rocking this guy. I'm also going to have him carry around the Insta360 Ace Pro. I feel like this will be an easy camera for him to just point, shoot, and go. So in terms of what I'm bringing, I'm going to bring my A camera, which we're currently filming on. It's the Sony ZV-E1 with the 11mm f1.8. That's an APS-C lens, but with dynamic stabilization on here, you can get away with using an APS-C lens. Next up for me is going to be my coveted Fujifilm X106. I love this thing, but I haven't been using it because I feel like it's like the ultimate travel camera. So I'm really happy that I can really finally put it to the test to see what it can do. This is basically going to be my B camera for video, but also my A camera for photos. Okay, next up is this handy dandy Insta360 GO 3S that we just did a video on. If you're interested in a video that I made for that, I will link this down below. But she is just so cute, tiny, and versatile. I love that we can just pop this off. Stick here for shy, go about our day, get some point of view, yada, yada, yada. This is so small, there's really no reason not to bring it. So this is definitely going into my kit. Then we have the Insta360 X4, which I wasn't gonna bring because I'm like, I'm not gonna use this. But then I was like, oh my gosh, Shibuya Crossing. Like this would be so cool to just hold up really high and while everyone walks, just try to capture a huge 360 footage of that. So, I'm literally only bringing this for Shibuya Crossing. It's still pretty light and portable, so why not? And then the last camera I am bringing is the Olympus Mu, and this is a film camera, and I am shooting this with Portra 800 film. Again, this is another camera I haven't been utilizing as much, so I am excited to take this out with me and, you know, just shoot away and forget about it and then develop it like months down the line. Oh, and I forgot, obviously I'll have my iPhone with me at all times and you know what they say, the best camera is the one that's on you. So this guy's coming for sure. And so because we have all this tech we need to charge, I'm also taking my Anchor Power Bank. I just recently picked this up. And the reason I chose this one, which all of this will be linked down below in case you're interested in checking out. But the reason I chose this one is because this can also charge my MacBook Pro, which I'm also bringing. And if I'm going to be doing editing on the plane and might need some juice, this guy will come in clutch. But also when we're out and about traveling on trains, 
we can pretty much charge one, two, three devices with just this one thing. So we can top off all of our cameras in just like a single train trip or something like that. So this guy's coming along with us. I am also taking my iPad Pro. This is literally just an entertainment device. The majority of this will be used going there because I'm just gonna watch a bunch of videos. I also downloaded a bunch of YouTube videos I need to catch up on. I'm also bringing a converter with me. I also have a Sony charger right here. Here's a quick hack. Instead of bringing the cord that comes with it that's really long, you can actually use a MacBook Pro power bank adapter prong thingamajig right here. It just goes in there like so and then you can just attach it to the wall and because these guys are bulky i actually just put them in between my clothes in my check-in and that way they are safe and they don't take up room in my carry-ons speaking of carry-ons i have two bags right here that are going to come with me in my carry-ons these are my little tech pouches this first one i got from rei it's just a soft pouch but I keep a lot of my essentials in here that I think I might need. And also I use this for when we're out and about during a tour. Instead of taking this whole big thing with me, I'm just going to take this with me. But right now, because we are traveling, I have this set up for my travel needs. And I have a power brick here. I don't have my cord for this, but it will be in here. I have my AirPods right here. I have a clip here for my Insta360 Go 3. I also have some lipstick. Just kidding. It's actually a little brush so that you can wipe your lens that fits dusty without touching it. I'll start here. I have some film. This is the Kodak Portra 800 film. I have some cleaning wipes for both my glasses, but as well as lenses. Okay, now I have my larger tech pouch and this is from Peak Design and this holds pretty much everything that I need. Pen, you never know when you'll need that. I have this Pelican SD card holder. Just has some extra memory cards. We have an adapter here for USB-A to USB-C. And then we also have batteries right there, two Sony batteries and an extra Fuji X100 6 battery. The cool thing about this X100 6 battery is it has a USB-C port right here. So you can just charge the battery so easily. Like, isn't that so cool? All batteries need a USB-C port. What else do we have in here? We have this, it's also important. It's my Samsung portable SSD drive. SSD drives are so much faster than normal hard drives. Highly recommend portable SSD drives. So basically I have two backups now. One is gonna go straight directly onto my computer and then the other is gonna go onto my portable SSD drive. I'm really paranoid about my footage if you couldn't tell, but I just wanna make sure that I have them, you know? We have other USB-C cables in here if we wanna charge multiple things at once. I have some tools, L wrenches. I have some eyeglass screwdriver. We have some ND filters. This one is for my DJI Pocket 3 and then this one is for my Insta360 GO 3S. These are great if it's really sunny and you want a little bit more of a natural movement in your footage. We have this magnetic pendant for my POV shots with my GO 3S. I'll probably put like Donnie's cam in here if he's not going to really use that traveling. I can also put my Mew camera in here. So this definitely still has much more room to fill up. Oh, I'm also taking this guy because I feel like it's so portable. Like you can take this off and then these just can go in your bag. And so now I have a selfie stick where I can basically attach my Go 3S and then just get some static shots of us walking if we need to. Like, you know, vlogging sort of style footage, like us walking into a coffee shop. <laughs> so this will be clutch for that. Oh my god, I just realized I didn't show you guys my Pocket 3, which is also coming with me. I debated bringing this, but because there's a lot of temples in Japan, I feel like gimbal-like footage will be good for that. So another one to the bag that I forgot about. <laughs> Then in terms of traveling and taking this all with me, all the camera gear, I'm just taking my handy in-case camera backpack. I have had this for so many years. I just haven't been able to find another backpack that is as convenient as this. And it's just so simple looking and has quick access to things. So I love that the top right here can access to your main camera right away. And then I also love that the back basically just opens all the way up and you could throw all your gear in there. Really easy, simple, has all these pockets, zippers for other things, so. I am looking to get a new camera backpack, I just haven't found one, so if you guys have any recommendations on something, let me know down in the comments below. I have checked out things from like Peter McKinnon, all his collaborations, and I just find there's too much stuff going on with a lot of backpacks. I just like mine simple and easy access, so. That's why I've held on to that for so long. The second camera bag I'm bringing is this one, and this is from a company called Think Tank. This has been around the world with me, and look how well it has stood the test of time. I mean, it's a super classic design, 
and it actually fits a lot of things. I know it looks big now because of this wide angle lens, but it's not that big. I also like that it has Velcro here, but if you're in a place where you don't want that loud Velcro, it has these sound silencers where you put this up like that. Now there's no Velcro on this part, so it won't attach where this one attaches. So that's really cool and handy to have. This was really important for me. No, oh, sorry. This was really important for me when I was shooting weddings because obviously you don't want to <sighs> during a important moment. It also has a huge pocket in the front right here. Like, look how big that is. That's the front. Has a secondary pocket in the actual main compartment here. And then you have your main compartment. So what I think I'm going to do is just put some dividers here and it'll be my Sony ZV-1, my action camera, and then my Fuji X100. So really easy to just take out, put away, take out, put away. So I love this bag. I also have the bigger version of this. So basically this is the bag that I'm going to be using primarily as we explore Japan. Okay, that's going to be it for my little tech haul of what we're bringing to Japan. I'm going to do a little quick skincare one with you guys as well as toiletries later on in the video. Tomorrow we're going to go thrifting because I have a bunch of clothes I want to sell so that we can make room in our closet for some clothes that we buy in Japan. So I'll take you guys along with me. I will check in with you guys tomorrow. Hi guys, good morning. It's the next day and we're actually going to meet up with a friend for coffee and thrifting today. But before we do that, I wanted to go over the skincare I'm planning to take to Japan as well as some toiletries and also travel essentials that we're going to take on the plane with us. So let's start with some skincare. I have all my skincare in here and this is going to go in my check-in luggage. So let's see what we got. <laughs> For my cleanser, I'm using this Versed product and it's the Keep the Peace Acne Calming Cream Cleanser. I really like this because I like how it feels on my skin. There's a little bit of texture there and I just feel like it washes off my skin really nicely compared to other cleansers I've tried. And I'm also like, I've, I've gone the route of expensive skincare products, but now I'm just like, you know what? As long as the ingredients are in there, that's all I really care about. So that's kind of where I'm at right now with my skincare. So yeah, for a facial cleanser, I like this guy. So during the day, I will cleanse with this. Then I will go in with a serum, and this is called Coco Kind. And this one has ceramides in it, which is good for replenishing the skin barrier and basically good for moisturizing your skin and keeping it nourished. So after I go with this, I'll go in with just a basic facial moisturizing lotion. And I like this one from CeraVe because it has SPF in it. I literally just learned how important sunscreen is for your face like when I was 38. And so I didn't wear sunscreen on my face until then. If you are in your 20s or 30s, start using sunscreen for your face. It helps reduce your pores. It just helps overall with your skin tone and keeping your skin healthy. And then after that, I will go in with again a CeraVe and this is an eye repair cream. And this one just helps with dark circles and puffiness. So that's my daycare skincare routine. For night, again, I'll just go in and wash my face with this. And then I'll go in with another serum. And this is Hyaluronic Acid by The Ordinary. And this basically acts very similar as the first serum I used. It basically just helps keep the moisture in your face. The ways they do it just are different ceramide versus hyaluronic acid. There's a science between it. This is, I think, skin barrier. And I want to say hyaluronic acid, we actually create that naturally, and this is just adding to it. Don't quote me on that. I'm not a skincare professional. This is just what I use. And then I will go in with another CeraVe product, Skin Renewing Night Cream. And this one again has three essential ceramides and also, what's that word called? Niacinamide. I've heard so many skincare professionals talk about that, so I'm like, ooh, let's put that on our face. <laughs> I will also use this at night as well. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Very basic and simple. When I'm home, this is pretty much the skincare routine I do use, except sometimes at night I'll exfoliate and then I'll add retinol to it. But because we're gonna be out in the sun, it's not really good to be using retinol products just because it can tend to make your skin sensitive. So you wanna stay away from retinol if you are gonna be exposed to the sun for long periods. Other than that, that's pretty much what I use on a daily basis. There's my skincare routine that a lot of you guys have been asking down in the comments. All right, now let's talk about some of the toiletries we're bringing to our trip. I'm not gonna talk about like the obvious essentials like toothbrush, toothpaste, soap, shampoo, all that stuff. I'm just gonna do some of the things that we like to bring for us when we go traveling. And the first one is 
Again, sunscreen, so important. And this one again is by CeraVe. I like CeraVe because they're in Target and also Amazon. So if you run out, you can go to the store or you can order it on Amazon and it comes fairly quickly. So that's just kind of what we've been using lately. And they're very affordable and the ingredients are great. So the only, my only issue honestly with CeraVe is I hate the packaging. This is so ugly to me. She's not cute, but you know what? It doesn't matter. <laughs> I gotta get over that. Sometimes you don't need everything to be aesthetic, okay? Along with that is this CeraVe stick, and I like this for reapplying on your face when you need to, and it also has ceramides and hyaluronic acid. We also like to take some eye masks with us. We love this because, you know, when you're out and about all day, sometimes you're just really tired. This helps kind of the puffiness and dark circles under your eyes, and you just feel really hydrated the next day. In terms of smelling good, I'm gonna bring my Lies 41. And this is from Lilabo. I don't normally bring larger colognes with me. We'll bring like sample sizes of stuff we have, but this is almost done. So I figured, you know what? Let's just take it with us and we'll get another one. <laughs> Okay, now let's talk about the essentials we're bringing on the plane with us as we travel. One of them I don't have yet. It's coming in tomorrow, I think, but it's just basically hand sanitizer. And it's those cute ones that come in like a square shaped form. They're kind of expensive, but honestly, they were super cute. So I was like, let's get one. So <laughs> I ordered that. Also, we wanna make sure we always have Imodium on us for emergencies. You just never know what you might eat on the plane. I have never had any issues, but you just never know. So we always make sure to take Imodium with us. We like to take mouthwash because something about just being on the plane, sleeping, it feels like you took a nap. Nap, and every time I go to sleep and wake up, I always feel like I need to brush my teeth. And so this is clutch for feeling fresh after a plane ride. We have this Aquaphor lip balm. This is this has been my favorite lip balm because it's very hydrating. We have some disinfecting wipes by Clorox. Clutch for just wiping down your tray and everything around you in the plane because you know you're eating on that thing. So just at least make sure that's clean. Also some gum just to go along with that extra freshness of breath right when you get off the plane. You don't have time to do this pop in a gum. And then lastly, just deodorant. I like to re-deodorize after I get off a plane to feel a little bit more clean. I will wipe first and then deodorize. And it just feels like I took like a little mini shower to be honest with you. Okay, so that's all the skincare and toiletries we're planning on bringing. I know it looks like a lot, but keep in mind this is split between two people. So Donnie has his own dop kit that he'll take some of this with him and then I'll have mine. So it's not like all of this is going with one person. It's gonna be spread throughout. So it's not like I'm carrying all of this on my own. Oh, fuck. Ooh, almost got a cramp. <laughs> Okay, we're gonna get ready, head over to Hinar. I think it's called Hinar Coffee, Hinar Cafe. It's over in downtown, but it's a coffee shop I've been wanting to try out. My friend Gyps is gonna meet us there. Then we're gonna go to Buffalo Exchange. I'm gonna try to sell some clothes, go thrifting, have a little thrift day with Gyps. But I'll take you guys along with us just for a little bit of that. I'm taking my Fuji X106 with me just because I wanna practice with it. I don't want Japan to be kind of like one of my first times doing video with it. I've only used the video inside my house for like some B-roll, so I wanna take it out and about and see kind of how it works and just, you know, kind of play around with it. So let's go grab some coffee, thrifting with the X106. Okay, it's the next day and I just wanted to show you the final packing situation. Over here, it's all pretty much empty. So this is going to be reserved for whatever we end up buying in Japan. Actually, I do have to put my shoes in there, so those guys will be in there, but a lot of room still. And then on the right side, basically all of my clothes. I'm not even using these pockets, honestly and there is still room in here because I have these packing cubes and I'll link these packing cubes down below because I like them because they're see-through. So what I like to do is for each packing cube, I put on top sort of like the vibe of what's in there. So this is all our my button downs. Here I have some workout stuff and then these are pants and then these are just some of my t-shirts. So when I unpack, I don't have to like rummage through everything to find a shirt. And then I just have my uh, sleeping clothes and underwear here that I'll just throw in here because I don't really need them to be organized or anything like that. So basically just plop them like that. 
and uh, we're good to go. And then I have my carry-on right here. This is the Bespoke Topo Design Collaboration and it's a tote bag, so I like that it's super big. And the reason I like a tote bag is because I like to be able to just take things in and out really quickly. So in here I have my mom's sleeping pillow. I also have my sleeping pillow in here. So already these two things take up so much room. That's why I like this big bag. So you just throw them in here. I also have a camera cube in here because I'm gonna put my vlogging camera over here and then maybe just an action camera. So as I'm traveling or in the plane, I can just grab it easily. And then I'll probably put my iPad in here as well. And also this folds down. So if I wanna put it under the seat, it should be no problem. All right guys, that's gonna be it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm really excited about Japan. I'm hoping that I could get at least one vlog edited while I'm there. Just because two weeks without a vlog seems like a long time for YouTube. So crossing fingers, I have some time to edit. I do have to remind myself though that I am on vacation. So I have to try to find a balance between work and play. So we'll see how that goes. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention that yesterday we did go thrifting, but we didn't do a ton of it because we were a little bit pressed for time. But I did find a set, or Gyps found a set for me as I was trying to sell my clothes. He was like, this might look good on you. So I will leave a picture right here because I did try it on. Also, I just want to say thank you again to Level 8 for sponsoring a portion of this video. I feel like we're going to look so cute traveling in Tokyo with our little luggage. <laughs> And finally, I'm also excited just to be able to spend time with my family, especially my mom. She's turning 80, so this is going to be one of those core memories for our family. And I'm also glad that I'm vlogging because this is taking me back to the origins of why I started a vlog and YouTube channel was to create and document memories for me and my family to be able to look back on. So hopefully one day this Japan series will bring so much joy for our family to, to look back at. So yeah, and so with that said, as always, thank you guys so much for watching. And if you can, try to choose Happy Over Sad today and I will catch you over in Japan. Bye everyone.